do these 10 things really make a difference in your skateboarding? So first off, I can already hear the furious fingers typing about how I'm wrong about each one of these things. And that's fine, but just remember that so much of a skateboard setup depends on personal preference and what you've gotten used to, and these are mainly just my opinions. So first up, we have deck size. So does the size of your deck really matter, or is it more of a personal preference thing? Well, it depends on who you ask, really. Some people will say that bigger decks are better because of the stability and wider area to land on, while others will say small is better because of the faster flip and ability to get tech. In my opinion, you can pretty much get used to anything in skateboarding, including your deck size. When I first started skateboarding, I rode a 775, which by today's standards is pretty small. I eventually went up to an 8, and now I've been skating an 8.5 for the last couple years. And honestly, aside from having to get comfortable with the new size for a few days, I feel as comfortable now on my 8.5 as I did on my 775. There are the obvious facts that a wider board gives you more surface area to land on, which may make it better for those doing big gaps, and a smaller board is technically easier to flip faster, but other factors like building your flicking muscles and your style of skating play just as big of a role. There are plenty of pros who skate pretty wide decks and still get tech, or others who skate pretty skinny decks and do big gaps, which I think just shows that it's all in what you've gotten used to. So up next we have deck brand. So here it is, the million dollar question. Does the board brand you skate really make a difference? Well, cue the angry fanboys, but in my honest opinion, the answer is no, at least within reason. Of course, there's gonna be a big difference between a Walmart board and a toy machine, but I'm talking more about the difference between top level brands. That's not to say there aren't differences between the brands. Deck shape, concave, what kind of wood is used, and technology all make a difference and can vary between brands. But in general, these differences are up to personal preference and the overall quality between deck brands of big skate companies are pretty similar. And of course you'll hear anecdotes of people whose primitive decks snapped on the first day or someone whose zero has lasted them years, but really it comes down to the skater. With that being said, I always do suggest trying new brands to see what works best for you. Just really do try to avoid the Walmart boards. At number three, we have wheel size. Wheel size is something that actually can have a difference depending on your style of skating. In general, larger wheels are going to be good for cruising and skating parks, while smaller wheels are good for street skating and tech. You'll see street skaters skating between 50 and 54 millimeters, while park skaters will be a bit larger, around 54 to 58 millimeters. Smaller wheels will be a bit slower, but also lighter and easier to flip, while bigger wheels will get you faster, but also be a bit bulkier. Personally, I skate 53s, which I find to be the perfect size to cruise down the street, but also flip my board quick enough. Depending on what you like to skate and what the conditions of the streets are around you, you may want to size up or down accordingly. And speaking of wheels, up next we have wheel hardness. Wheel hardness and size are pretty similar when it comes to what type of skating you like to do. Just like with the wheel size, harder wheels are good for street and tech skating, while softer wheels are good for park and transition. So in general you'll see street skaters with smaller harder wheels and park skaters with larger softer wheels. Harder wheels are easier to power slide and tend not to flat spot, which makes them good for doing slides and tech tricks. And softer wheels are good for cruising over rough terrain and having better traction when skating tranny or cornering. This is why you see big soft wheels on cruisers and longboards and small hard wheels on street boards. Up next we have tight versus loose trucks. A big point of contention between skaters is whether you should skate your trucks tight or loose. Most people will tell you that loose trucks are better because it gives you more control, better turning, and in some cases better style. While others swear by tight trucks because of the added stability and less chance for wheel bite. Once again, this comes down to personal preference and what you're comfortable with, but in general, I tend to agree with the looser truck people. I usually keep my trucks exactly how they come when they're new, which is a little in between tight and loose, and then I let them loosen up naturally over time. The added control of your trucks reacting quickly while loose really makes you feel in tune with your board, and in my opinion, leads to being more comfortable and controlled on a board. So try out both and see which you feel more comfortable with. And to go along with our truck tightness, we have bushing hardness. So speaking of truck tightness, choosing between hard and soft bushings can have an effect on how your trucks perform as well. Softer bushings will cause your trucks to turn easier and give some compression room when doing drops, while harder bushings are stiffer and don't give as much wiggle room. There are other factors that come into play like bushing shape and how tight you keep your trucks, which combined with the bushings hardness can change the overall feel of your trucks. It can get pretty complicated trying to find what mix you like, and this is why I just avoid the whole mess and just stick with the bushings that come with the trucks. 
I have tried some aftermarket bushings though and found that for someone like me who tends to just skate street, the difference was minimal. Or you could just be like day one and take your bushings out completely. So while we're still on the subject of trucks, let's talk about high versus low trucks. So what the heck are high and low trucks? It's basically what it sounds like. High trucks will generally be a little taller than low trucks, which means your board sits a little higher or lower off the ground. There are some obvious benefits that this can create depending on your skate style. Higher trucks means better turning, less wheel bite, and the ability to use larger wheels, while low trucks mean a lower center of gravity allowing you to flip the board faster and just get more tech in general. The difference between height is pretty small though, and for some skaters there won't be a huge discernible difference. Some say that you can get better pop on one or the other, but this also comes down to your wheel size and wheel base. Aaron from RadRat did a good video showing the discrepancies in high versus low trucks between truck companies, which is an interesting watch that I recommend you check out. I skated low trucks for years and recently switched to highs and don't notice much of a difference other than slightly better turning. Up next, we have bearing ABEC. When I was growing up skating, everyone knew that the higher your bearing's ABEC rating, the faster you will go and the smoother your ride will be. So an ABEC 1 bearing was crap compared to an ABEC 7. This led people to spending more money on higher ABEC bearings to get a faster, smoother ride. Well, it turns out we were all wrong because bearing ABEC has little to no bearing on your skating performance. There's a lot of information about ABEC on the internet and a quick TLDR will show you that when it comes to the needs of a skateboarder, bearing ABEC makes such a little difference that most would never be able to tell what ABEC they're rolling on. Now, there may be something to the build quality being better in a higher ABEC bearing, which some say can make them last longer, but in reality, a bearing's lifespan and how long it stays rolling smoothly depends more on how well you take care of your bearings. Keeping your bearings clean and not rolling through oceans of mud will have much more of a difference than bearing ABEC by itself. At number nine, we have riser pads. Now, I used to only skate with risers, and I'm not really sure why, but I remember always having them. I think I heard that they help reduce pressure cracks, and of course, the little bit of added height could help get rid of wheel bite. From what I can tell, the three main reasons to use risers are shock absorption, wheel bite reduction, and giving you more pop by increasing the distance between your deck and the ground. I stopped using risers a few years ago, and I gotta say, I haven't noticed a single difference. Now, this is just my personal experience, and maybe someone like me who doesn't skate big gaps anymore won't need them, but I get the same amount of wheel bite as I ever did, and I don't get pressure cracks without the risers. And after switching to high trucks instead of the lows, it gave me pretty much the same amount of extra height that risers would have. If you ride bigger wheels, risers can definitely help reduce wheel bite, but if you're a casual street skater, you probably won't need them. But different things work for different people, so it doesn't hurt to try them out to see if they're right for you. And lastly, we have shoe size. One of the most asked questions I get from beginners when they first start skating is, does your shoe size matter? It's a logical question and apparent why you would think that really big or really small feet may affect your skateboarding and maybe make the board harder to flip or make you need a bigger board. And as someone who can't actively change the size of my feet at will, I can only speak from what I've observed. And I think the fact that you see little six-year-olds with tiny feet flipping their boards, as well as bigger people with bigger feet skating just as well, shows you that your shoe size doesn't have too much of a huge effect on your skating. Of course, if you have size three shoes, it might be harder to skate a nine inch deck and vice versa. But in general, you should be able to learn to skate despite shoe size. And for this one, I'd say it's more about practicing and getting good than the actual physical part of your foot size limiting you. So overall, as you can see, pretty much everything comes down to your personal preference. Changing deck size or shape or wheel hardness or truck tightness can feel weird at first, but just like with most things in life, if you do it enough, eventually it'll start to feel normal. A lot of finding what works for you comes down to trial and error, and there's not really a way to tell what will be perfect for you without trying it. So just go out and skate a friend's board or just go for it and buy a brand you've never tried before and see how you like it. In the end, you'll find that it's not so much about what you skate, but rather how you skate it. So just go out and have fun. As always, I'd like to thank my Patreon pledgers for helping to keep this channel rolling. And I'd like to thank you for watching, and you can like and subscribe if you want.